Big congratulations to last week's winner, Comic Fam, the gurus in the house. Let's chat some Moss Hot comic books. Another week, another list, another list, and then another list. Jeb Mint's on the line, but we got to get the Golden Age guru in the casa. You guys are chatting Golden Age books, man. It's proper. You got to bring me in. I've owned four of these six books. Pretty stoked to talk about them. Thanks for coming through, Jeff, and helping us out with these Golden Age books. Guys, make sure to like and subscribe as we jump into the number 10 in this week's honorable mentions. We're talking Tales from the Crypt, issue 46. We're talking the Crypt Keeper. We're talking the Vault Keeper. We're talking the Old Witch, damn it, Jeff. What you got for us? We're also talking about the last issue in the run, issue 46, done by Jack Davis. EC greatness. I mean, you have nothing but legends coming out of there. You got Graham Ingalls. You got Al Feldstein. You even have Frazetta making an appearance on some of these covers. This book has sold for an obnoxious number. I have to tell you, I've owned this book. I've never come close to selling it to this number. The 5.0 prior record was set in 2017, only hitting 475. Yeah, that sounds about right for a 2017 price, a 2018 price, and maybe even a tail end of a 2019 price. But to see it 2021 at 1260 does floor me a bit. I would not have guessed this book to be more than $800 in a 40, 700. I mean, ECs are really common books. It was one of the most like like purchased of all horror and they had the best artwork on the interior, exterior. It's not maybe the most rare of horror books, but it is the most collected. So the demand is putting it at an extremely high price right now. An increase of 165% since the prior sale. Comic Fam utilized code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence. We're chatting Key Collector Comics. These 10 books, these runners up that didn't quite make enough record breakers to land on our hot 10. Well, there's 10 others yet you gotta know that didn't make this very list. Unlock the full list, support what we do, and Jem, hit them with number nine. The only book on this list that I've ever owned, although I've never owned it in a 9.9, .9, Amazing Spider-Man 316, one of, if not my favorite comic book covers of all time, Todd McFarlane goodness in the third appearance of Venom. The first full cover appearance of Venom, and this is not an Eric Larson cover. Shots thrown at the Overstreet Advisor, Russ. We're going to keep it coming, brother. We love you. I mean, you might not have owned a 316, but didn't you own like a quintuplet cover of 361? <laughs> Actually, that one wasn't mine. That was a buddies of mine, but that was a crazy book too. This book sold for $5,000 back in 2019. It's up now 168%, selling for 13375 The 9.9 .9 breaking 13K. The guru's shaking his head. Let's keep it rolling before he just leaves the table. Tales of Suspense 64. We're talking the third appearance of Hawkeye. We're talking a 7.0 hitting $130 back in 2015. That's funny. Another third appearance back to back. Yeah, in 2015, it went for $130, but it's up 169%, now selling for $350. The Return of Hawkeye, The Black Widow, an Iron Man and Captain America cover, and a minor key to boot next on the list. We're talking Astonishing Tales, issue number 33. Coming in at number seven on the list, the first appearance of Hellinger, the creator of Deathlock and the father of Death Locket. We're talking about a CGC 9.8, a book that sold for $780 back in 2020, now selling for $2,322. I am a huge fan right now of any Bronze Age book in 9.8. Like, if I have a Bronze Age book in 9.8, especially a key, I'm going to tuck that away right now for as long as possible. 9.6, unless it's a Luke Cage number one, or Hero for Hire one, whatever you want to really call it, um, because that in a 9.6 is exceptionally difficult. I'm going to let it go. So for me, 9.4, definitely gone. But 9.6, 9.8, that's something special about that Bronze Age. And to have that in 9.8, it's kind of like a, an investment book you almost put aside. It makes sense that we are not seeing as many of these Bronze Age 9.8s hit the market. And when they do, that's why we see such an uptick in price. Members are hoarding them right now because they know that their time will come. And they're going to see increasing amount of investment dollars put to this particular era. Next on the list, we got some Johnny Craig. We have more werewolf covers. Another EC artist legend. The bullpen there was obnoxious. This is a, another werewolf cover. And look, we're looking at the price, 683 for 6.0. I had this book in a 6.0, okay? I don't really think this is a strong number at all for this book because I sold my 6.0 last year for 700. 
So to see this at 683 here on this list, eh, meh, maybe GPA didn't have any good recorded sales, so it's showing to be pretty high. But it's not the strongest of sales. It's not the greatest of werewolf covers for me. That 46, that stands out. Out of all EC werewolf covers, almost, and probably for me, the best one. So this is a good one. People are aware of it. 683, eh, it's a map price for me. You heard it here first from the guru. He actually had a higher sale, but still, that 683 is pretty impressive when you consider that it sold for $207 way back in 2012. It's up 230% since then. And next on the list at number five, a book that we've chatted about multiple times on the mic. We're Chan Submariner Comics issue number one, the first solo series featuring the Submariner. Yeah, these numbers still surprise me, man. I mean, we're seeing that a 5.5 sold in 2015 for 8K. And now we just saw a sale of $33,000. That's a 313% increase since 2015. Yeah, cool book. We understand the hype, Submariner, right? But this is probably his somewhere between 16th to 18th appearance. Not even his first cover appearance. But it is a Submariner comics. It's a, it is a first issue for a major hero. Okay? These numbers will probably still go up. If I put my money in a book, it's probably going to be more Marvel Mystery Comics 4. Because that's the first cover appearance of Submariner. It's also the first uh, swastika cover appearance in comics. It's a very coveted book. For this type of dollar amount... I don't know, man. I'd probably put it towards that book over this one. But again, it's very Action Comics number one, right? Instead of him in a car smashing into a rock, you have like this submarine and the superhero crushing it into back into the ocean. Great looking cover, great looking book. I just, I know the numbers are going to go up, but it's just not for me to put $33,000 into this book. There's a lot of alternatives that you can put that money into when you're talking the down payment for a damn house. All right, next on the list at number four, we have a comic book that's literally sitting in front of me and one that is much higher in grade than the one that we're reporting on. We have Daring Mystery Comics issue number four. Jeff, Jem, I'm looking at a 6.5 on this table right here right now. A 6.5 on the table, and we're here talking about a record-breaking sale for a 2.0, which is not cheap, by the way. I've always loved this cover. This is not a very long run. I think it's about eight issues. And Alex Schomburg did the cover, and he actually, his first cover work in comics was Daring Mystery Comics number one. So this is very close to the beginning of his, of the, um, I don't know, his legendary beginnings in comics. Love the cover. If you look at this carefully, you literally see somebody about to get hit with an anvil on the head. Or not even an anvil, excuse me, a sledgehammer, while someone's being tied up to TNT. It screams 1940. It screams crime. It screams me having to buy it. And I bought this. God, I probably paid $1,200 like five years ago for that book. I mean, it's amazing. It rarely comes up. And that's one of the things. These books rarely come up. So to have seen it in grade, I believe I bought it at a convention. I had to snatch it up. And these numbers right now for 2.0 really get me psyched because I own a copy, obviously. A 2.0 sold for almost $4,000. That is up 854%. From $418 in 2006. Talk about some good speculation happening, comic fam. That's why they call him the Golden Age Guru. We got the first appearance of Whirlwind Carter. We have the first appearance of Don Gorman, a pilot. I suspect it's not these characters possibly appearing in the MCU anytime soon. However, it is a timely comics book from 1940 and a bondage cover. But let's keep this Golden Age talk going next at the list. What are we at? Number three, we have Hit Comics number seven to discuss. Ah, this is some amazing stuff here. We talked about Alex Schomburg, but this is Lou Fine. Lou Fine crushes this run, and he really hits his stride around issue five, which is probably one of his most famous issues in this run and some of the most memorable covers that he's ever done. It's got a huge swordfish on it, black cover. Not one of my favorites, but coveted by many. Okay, this issue number seven has this amazing skull image, and this girl tied to the teeth of this of this statuette, emblem, whatever it is. It's the heroes swooping in, crushing some villain in the face. Classic, classic. This hit run, if you're going to get into comics, is extremely difficult to collect because they don't come up often. And as he hits his stride in number five to, I'm not even sure how far he goes into this run, but issue 10 
11. I love number 11. Huge red cover fighting this polar bear like creature. You got to check out this run, guys. If you get a chance, Google hit comics. And we have a 3.0 that we haven't seen hit the market, as you just alluded to, in quite some time. 2017 selling for a lonely $324. Jeff, we're talking an increase of 1,289% this very week. What did the 3.0 go for? It sold for $4,500. And if those two books weren't enough bondage for you, number two on the list, we have Ghost Comics 6. Another bondage cover, but it almost has this like hunchback of Notre Dame witch type character on the front. Jeff, help me out. What's going on with this book? Yes, yeah, so this is a Maurice Whitman cover, and I think this entire run was Maurice Whitman. It's about an 11-issue run, some great covers in this title. Number two is absolutely amazing. It's a lingerie cover, probably the better of the two, but if you like Monster like this, is definitely going to exceed that. I think number seven's got hanging panels as well on the cover, also a great book. But this one, you got the classic red dress, the girls in bondage. you got the hero coming out of this trap door with his gun, and if you look carefully, there's this webbing in the back and this furry-like creature in the shadows. A great cover when you really just stare at it. Amazing coloring, too. And it really gives you this eerie feel. So this book has always been coveted, as has number two. But the sales, I feel, kind of weaned a little bit around 2019. And I've seen a lot of private sales. But to see a public sale now, finally, is great because now something goes on record to let people know what these books kind of go for. We're talking a 5.5. Last record was set in 2009. Yeah, and it sold for $191. That 5.5 now selling for $3,877 for a 1,930% increase. That sounds about right for this book. I mean, from the private sales, I'm not shocked. I would have thought maybe this book would have sold around closer to three, but to hear it almost at the 4K mark, I'm not surprised. Like and subscribe and comment down below. Let me know what you think about this golden age assessment. I'm very grateful that the guru was able to make it back. From New York City Comic Con in one piece, healthy as all hell, to chat some expensive paper. It'll enter you to win a King and Black number one Nick Klein variant. And Jem, hit him with the number one on our list this week. Yeah, this is kind of an anomaly book, right? Nova 13, but it's a 35 cent price variant. It's also the first appearance of Crime Buster in a CGC 9.4. There was no prior sales data for this book, so we could have actually tied this with Ghost Comics 6 for leading the list. However, a $600 price for a 9.4 Nova 13 may sound astonishing. However, we've been seeing at even the minimal convention appearances that we've been at, a lot of collectors hunting for these very special variants. These price variants are very, very wanted and sought after in the collectible market. And really, if you're lucky enough to know all of them and you're going through a box, you might pick up some kind of gem like that for regular price. So for anybody who collects these, they have to pay a premium. They're rare, they're hard to find, unless you find it in the wild, of course. Same with 30 cent price variants and Canadian price variants. I was just at New York Comic Con. I had a huge Canadian collector who showed me the variations of Spidey 252. Okay, and we'll show them right here in the photo. And the 252 in a Canadian price variant, which is a 75 cent price on the label, is a th marked at $1,000 for sale. I mean, that's the kind of numbers we're talking about for some of these books. Jam, we've chatted about the Iron Fist 14 variant. We've talked about Star Wars 1, the 35 cent variant. Not all price variants are are alike you know people are not going to spend the same type of dollars for a lower grade copy for a non-key book but we're still going to see an inflation take place and we're seeing it more than ever over this past year comic fam as always geek responsibly and stay minty fresh enough said we got two other videos for you to check out peep the last podcast it was with jeff the golden age guru and we also have the hot 10 the comics defining this generation of collectors with it's your boy jim mint have a great week